What's up blockheads in the garage today and uh, as you guys know or if you don't know we recently took a trip up to Georgia and back so basically made it up to Georgia and back in 32 hours to visit John Maxwell we were supposed to be continuing with her two wheels on up to Ohio and then we were going to hit tail of the dragon Blue Ridge and then up to Ohio but unfortunately I had some stuff come up where I had to come back to Florida but I actually had a lot of you guys ask me about the bike and how I had it loaded out so I wanted to go over what I had on it to kind of make a trip like that. And I also wanted to go over some things that I'll be changing in the future. Whenever you use your loadout, you kind of realize the, the little small changes that you need to make or the big changes that you need to make based on uh, the stuff that you're experiencing as you're using it. Just figured I'd go through this, show you guys what I, how I currently have it set up and what I'm going to be changing. If you guys are interested in any of this stuff, I'll be sure to drop links down in the description below. But if you have any questions on it, be sure to post them up down in the comments also. So as you guys know, uh, I have built out the bike, uh, what they call club style, right? So you've got like the front fairing on it. You've got taller bars, nine and a half inch hard case risers, 29 inch, I think they're 29 inch wide, Lucky Dave's MX style bars. Get the mirrors down below. Arlen S grips, Saddleman seat, which is a step up with the tuck and roll in the front and the diamond stitch in the back. And we've got the Vasani sweeper pipes, thrash and pegs. We've got a, a speaker system from Plux Audio here. But regarding the things that I put on here or have for the uh, for being able to do more distance, uh, we basically did 802.4 miles, I think, in 32 hours. 804.2 in uh yeah 32 hours so we basically left here in florida went up to georgia met with john maxwell hung out in his shop for a while checked in at a hotel and then we grabbed dinner with him you know had some beers and then came back the next morning so pretty crazy a couple things that made that trip easier for me is the height of the bars so you basically have like i said the nine and a half inch hard case risers plus the mx style bars i think they come up about like inch and a half like two inches more so the ergonomics of the bike for my my hands my hand placement and my arms while while riding the bike is very just like they're even with my shoulders and that's kind of what you want if you think about like when you're driving a car usually the steering wheel you're reaching straight out and it's even with your shoulders so the height of the bars huge absolutely huge thing that uh helped with the trip another thing that helped with the trip that I would highly recommend is this Airhawk seat. So I do have a Saddleman step up for around town and stuff. This is great. I went with the tuck and roll because it is softer option than the diamond stitch. I've got a lot of friends that have Saddleman's and the diamond stitch, whenever it's here on the actual seat area, it definitely makes it a bit firmer. So I, I go with the tuck and roll option. Then on top of that, went ahead and threw the Airhawk. That's basically just like a layer, kind of goes around your seat. Be these straps here, and they are just soft straps. Oh, that one came undone. There's like this little, you can unzip it here, and you put air in it, right? Based on uh, however firm or soft you want it. And so I bought this years ago whenever we did the Key West trip, but that was absolutely essential. I put the sissy bar on it because I was taking my backpack to work. A lot of you guys said, just put your backpack on your back. To anybody that says that, you've clearly never ridden with a backpack on your back on a motorcycle because whenever you get to wherever you're going, especially if you're in a hot climate, and Florida is a hot climate, and a humid climate. You've got a big wet spot on your back from sweating. So backpack on your back, not an option whenever you're going to work. So I got the sissy bar and this bag, I ended up getting a couple years back as a gift from Get Lowered. They sent it for, I wanna say for like Christmas or something. At the time, I was just kind of like, I don't really know what I would use it for, but this is a, what they call the Icon Dreadnought. And it's like a, I wanna say like almost completely weatherproof. It's basically made of, you know, like rubber and then the inside is totally weatherproof. The way it seals up is it folds down, clips on, and it's got multiple compartments. It comes with like a little thing for a tool roll. We'll definitely have to do like a feature on this bag, give it its own video because it's it's an amazing bag. It is now my go-to. So big thanks to Get Lower. I appreciate you guys. So Reese was kind enough. He actually lent me these bags, uh, which are the Thrash and Supply, the Essentials. They have two sizes. They've got these this size, which they say will fit a six pack. And then they've got another bigger size, which I say will fit a 12 pack. Now this is a smaller of the size. In this side, I end up doing, I would buy a drink, you know, at a gas station and then drink one. And then I'd keep one in here. Um, I also did like some hand sanitizer. There's a microfiber. There's some stuff to clean a visor, extra set of gloves. I got some stickers. And then in the very bottom, I've got some tools, a couple wrenches, adjustable crescent wrenches. And then on the top here, a helmet lock, 
and then you've got a uh, multi-tool, which is actually from Harley. So these are both Reese's. So thanks, man, once again, for lending those to me. I appreciate it. Using these has made me realize that like having bags that you can just like throw on and throw off like super easy like these ones, incredibly useful, but I would need bigger because I, I absolutely max these out without even trying. Now you guys did ask me what the underside of these looks like. A little strap that goes in between there. So the underside of this is soft. It's, it, I don't know, it shouldn't scratch your paint. If you have denim paint, it might like polish it a little bit. You can always like add like a layer in between also if you want, but it goes under your seat so you can't really see it. Oh man, I absolutely used the passenger pegs an absolute ton. So we'd be riding and like, you know, your legs get tired of being forward. And so I would just tuck my legs and put them back. Crazy nice to be able to ride flick that down and have my foot here. Usually like with my boot, especially, my boot would just catch right there and set like that. I use the uh, the bar bag here quite a bit. This is uh, San Diego Customs. Thrash and Supply also makes a bar bag. But you know, just whenever you're riding, quick, easy access to stuff. I had like some snacks in there. I had some peanuts and cashews, sunglasses in here, heat wave visual. Save 10% off of those using coupon code do it with Dan. I had extra GoPro batteries. I had, um, I had my mask. Eventually, like I kept on forgetting my mask in there. So I just put it in my back pocket of my jeans. Also another thing I used an absolute ton, you know, for the GPS was this Rockform phone mount. Incredibly useful. The Rockform phone mount uh, basically, you know, attaches to wherever you want on the bars. Also, if you don't have a bar bag, there's a spot in the risers where you can mount it into right there. On my phone, I have an OtterBox because, you know, I freaking love OtterBox. It keeps the connections like secured down here from like weather. Rockform sells this like little accessory that you can put on whatever phone case you want. And then whenever you do that, you know, it's got the magnet. So you can pretty much, you know, magnet it to whatever you want. It has that four-way latch piece onto the mount. And then the magnet also helps to hold it in place. And it's just crazy, like rock solid. And that was incredibly useful during the trip needing it for like GPS and stuff like that. Having that there and then being able to run a USB cable from the new Softails, you've got a USB plug down over here in the neck of the frame. So being able to run that from there and then into the phone, crazy useful. And I just routed it through the bar bag here as well. So that was incredibly useful during the trip, being able to keep my phone uh, visible with GPS going since I didn't know where I was going and powered up through the uh, USB. So far so good, I've been using them for over a year, but if you guys want a discount on that, check out the link down in the description below. You can save up to 25% off of everything on uh, Rockform's site. The fairing helped an absolute ton, uh, obviously like to, to break up the wind, but I did find that the windshield wasn't quite tall enough. So this is like the 13 inch. I also have the 11 inch vented. The 11 inch vented is good for around town, but the 13 inch obviously not vented is better for those distance trips. And since we went out 804 miles, definitely a distance trip, but based on my height, I found that like, you know, an extra like two inch tall windshield would definitely probably have been a little better for me. So I'm gonna make that change. I did have an extra visor. So this is a, a clear visor for my helmet and I just kind of stuck it in here, which wasn't the best place for it because it kept on like coming up. And then sometimes whenever we would hit bumps, it would like, you know, pop out and it'd be like down here and I would catch it. And that's, that's kind of dangerous, obviously. Like that's definitely something like I gotta find a place for that. I tried to fit it into these bags, but it wouldn't fit in the bag. So hopefully it with the bigger bags that I get, it'll fit into those. Clear visor for riding at night. If you have a helmet that has like an internal drop down visor, that's probably not something that you need to worry about, obviously. And this side has a full set of rain gear in these bags, which is crazy. So like the, the fact that I'm able to fit a full set of rain gear in here. Granted, like, I mean, this thing is packed tight. You guys can see it's packed to the brim. We've got the boots or boot covers. That's the pants. Nope. So pants, jacket, and boots all fit into there. I mean, that was pretty much all that fit into there. You couldn't even have anything up in this top part, but they fit great. I mean, I had this thing packed up with like seven shirts, seven pairs of socks, seven pairs of underwear, extra pair of pants, a little case with like my electronics and stuff in it, batteries, charging cables, like USB blocks, stuff like that. And the sissy bar held those on great They're using rock straps. So these rock straps are amazing. I just always leave them on the bike on the sissy bar just in case I ever need them. One of the biggest, most important pieces. That's it right there, guys. I think that was like one of the most important pieces of gear that I had during this trip was these, they call them plug phones. So I was basically able to plug this 
into my Senna. They're earplug headphones is what they are. So they basically protect your ears from wind noise, but you can also still hear your Senna. And so you can talk to other people. Communication is you know really important when you're doing a trip like this. And you can also listen to music, which is also really important during a trip like this because it prevents you from becoming exhausted. It kind of like I was listening to audio, like podcasts. I was listening to music. I listened to some Five Dirty Bikers podcast. I listened to the what is it, the $180 in a Dream podcast, which is Danny Dixon, and then just all sorts of music through Spotify, you know, which was on my phone, mounted to my bars. I think within like the last 10 miles, uh, I unplugged these. If I didn't have those, whenever I got to our destination, you know, going there, and then whenever I got home, coming back, it would have been like so different. My hearing would have been totally shot. I would have been completely exhausted. I can't recommend these things enough, guys. That's like, they were just such a lifesaver during that ride. In regards to stuff that like, I realized that I would change since I've done this trip and I know kind of where the, the weaknesses lie now. One of the big ones is definitely a taller windshield to help with that buffeting because there were times where I was ducking down to kind of get away from the wind. Whenever it would rain, we definitely got hit by rain quite a bit. The windshield pretty much kept kept the, the top of me dry. I was just wearing this textile jacket. It was like not enough like rain to wear the rain gear because we would just get wet. It would stop raining and we would dry off. So if it's gonna be like just constant rain, then obviously like put on your rain gear. The windshield kept me dry for the most part, my upper body. My gloves kept on getting soaking wet. I don't have any hand guards. So that's one of the things I would definitely wanna add is like some of those Memphis Shades hand guards here to kind of keep your hands dry whenever you do hit rain. And it also helps with the wind as well. Like I was saying, I would wanna do larger bags. So definitely uh, I'm gonna be scooping up a pair of the larger Thrash and Supply bags today from a friend that's selling them. One of the things that I also did on this bike was cruise control. That is absolutely huge during one of these trips. So if you if you have the ability to add cruise control onto your bike with this bike, all I had to do was buy the new like housing here. And then it comes with the wiring and everything and you hook it up and then Harley Davidson is able to just reprogram the ECU or whatever to uh, be able to have cruise control. So that's huge. But if you don't have the ability to do cruise control, having something over here on your throttle, like a throttle lock, I would highly recommend. I was thinking of maybe highway pegs, but like based on my seating position, I don't know that it would be such a great addition, but uh, I suppose it's worth a shot. I saw some online that might be uh, worth trying out. So that might be something that I do just to see if it helps a little bit. In the rain, you've got like all the slush that's thrown up by like other vehicles in front of you. Having my shoes here or my boots here, like I was fine, but there was a time where I rode with them back here, my boots just filled with water. So that sucked. We ended up arriving to John Maxwell's boots completely wet, socks completely wet. We just powered through it because it was like within the last 30 minutes. If I'm overlooking anything, I'll be sure to note it in the in the description or in the comments or whatever. But yeah, that was pretty much my loadout for uh, making that 800 mile round trip. Like I said, definitely some things that I would change and uh, some things that I will be changing. So look out for those changes coming soon. And then I'm also gonna be making a separate video with like five essential things or like however many essential things that I would highly recommend if you're looking to do distance. A lot of you guys out there are probably gonna say, just get a touring bike. Mm, I don't really want to because I don't make these trips like that often. So being able to take this platform, you know, the, the soft tail and throw some things on it to kind of fit my application, fit my needs, uh, if I am doing, you know, deciding to do distance, uh, it's, it's more useful for me, but I usually don't do 400, 600 mile trips with it. I do want to do some, but for the most part, you know, it's usually me and friends. We're riding around Orlando. We're doing like, you know, one hour, two hour trips. We're going over to the beach, grabbing some lunch, having some drinks, coming back. I don't really have a need for like a full touring bike. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the rundown of the loadout that I had while going up to Georgia, riding with Jess, her two wheels, and Greg, high-vis Greg. If you guys do have any questions, be sure to post them up down in the comments below. It's definitely a learning experience. Definitely gonna be making some changes here very soon because we're planning on some more trips, some longer trips here very soon as well. Hope you guys did enjoy the episode though. If you did hit that like button, Hitting that thumbs up helps the channel out quite a bit. If you guys aren't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.